After Moses, peace be upon him, the Bani Israel were a strong nation thanks to their adherence to the teachings of the Torah. But when they neglected their religion and injustice and corruption increased among them, Allah was angered by them, so they turned into a people of weakness and insignificance. The large parts of their lands and wealth were lost to their enemies and they became too weak to stand up to any aggression. So the elders of their tribe huddled to discuss their problems and find a solution to it. We must first acknowledge our problem if we sincerely want to solve it. Oh, I don't understand you, Grand Marchant. What do you want to say? I wanted to say that we are defeated, we are stateless, we do not follow one leader, and we do not have a wise king. I have a solution. I will be the king over you. Be silent, Hazron. Even the cattle that you trade in will not accept you as their king. What can be expected of a smith like you? Except that only fire would come out of his mouth. Get away! Get away from me with the smell of cattle coming from your clothes. Oh people, oh people, we are defeated because of our rivalry and our jealousy of each other. When will we put our arguments aside? It is of no use. At that time, the elders went to the prophet of God, Samuel, who was praying in his tent. After he finished his prayer, he welcomely looked at his people. Oh noble prophet, was it not God who sent you to us? The prophet said, Yes. Aren't we homeless and oppressed? The prophet said, Correct. Why don't you ask the Lord to send us a king who will unite us under his banner so that we may fight in the way of God? Yes, we will take back our land and fix the corruption that prevails among us. The Prophet said, I am afraid that if I pray to Allah to send you a king who will lead you into wars, you will refuse to fight. Why won't we fight for God's sake? We have been expelled from our homes and our children have become homeless. The Prophet said, You will not take back your words even if what you ask for might happen. How can we take back our words? This will never happen. Their prophet said, I will ask God Almighty to choose for you a king to fight under his leadership. He has gone back to his prayers. Leave him alone and let's go. <laughs> بعد موسى إذ قالوا لنبي لهم بعث لنا ملكا نقاتل في سبيل الله قال هل عسيتم إن كتب عليكم القتال ألا تقاتلوا قالوا وما لنا ألا نقاتل في سبيل الله وقد أخرجنا من ديارنا وأبنائنا فلما كتب عليهم القتال تولوا إلا قليلا منهم والله عليم بالظالمين where did the sheep go? I don't know what to say. I dozed off and when I woke up, I didn't find the sheep. This is my fault. I am the shepherd and I should have watched what I tend to. Your words hurt me the most. What are we going to do now? Oh, noble prophet, I went out tending sheep and donkeys. They strayed away from me into the desert and I don't know where they went. So I came to ask you about them. The prophet asked him, do you feel worried about your sheep and donkeys? Yes. The prophet said, Do not worry about it. How can I not worry, O noble prophet? It is my job and my whole capital. The prophet said, They have returned to your father's house. Thank God my halal money did not go to waste. The prophet said to him, Leave the matter of sheep and listen to me. Tell me, sir. My ears are with you. The elders of Bani Israel asked me to pray to Allah to send for them a wise king who will lead them into the wars of Allah. 
Yes, we are in need of a brave and wise king who might unite the people and we may live under his rule. Have you prayed to Allah, sir? The Prophet said, Yes, I prayed to God and he chose you as the king of Bani Israel. Allah, Allah is the one who chose me. He said, Yes. How can I be king when I'm just a simple tanner? The Prophet said, This is God's command and you have to prepare yourself for this fight. I'm waiting for you sign. Tomorrow came and the elders of Bani Israel gathered before the Prophet of God, Samuel, who said that God has appointed Talut as your king. Talut? This man? Our king? How can he be the king when we are more deserving of the kingship than him? The Prophet said, O oh people, why do you imagine that you are more deserving of the kingship than him? We are much richer than him. Look at his clothes. He is wearing the clothes of the poor shepherds. The Prophet said, the important thing is not to judge people by wealth or poverty. What matters is the ability to lead people. Ability? What ability? The Prophet said that Talud is God's choice for you and God Almighty chose him for his knowledge and ability. We believe you, O oh noble Prophet. But how can we forget that we are the elite and the masters of this nation? How did God ignore us and choose him? Why this Talud specifically? The Prophet said, it is not for someone like me to ask God why. The prophets do not ask, but listen and obey. And this is God's right alone. Do we not have the right to ask why God favored him over us? His knowledge is the one that has favored him over you. God has given him a wealth of knowledge and body. وَقَالَ لَهُمْ نَبِيُّهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ بَعَثَ لَكُمْ قَالُوا تَمَلِكَا قَالُوا أَنَّا يَكُونُ لَهُ الْمُلْكُ عَلَيْنَا وَنَحْنُ أَحَقُّ بِالْمُلْكِ مِنْهُ وَلَمْ يُؤْتَ سَعَةً مِنَ الْمَالِ قال إن الله اصطفاه عليكم وزاده بسطة في العلم والجسم والله يؤتي ملكه من يشاء والله واسع عليم. You have long argued about my entitlement to the kingship, even though it is God's choice for you and me. Whereas you do not think about the danger of King Jalut who robbed your lands and plundered your bounties and is preparing with his army to get to you. I will never make this request to the Prophet Samuel. Did we not agree? We agreed to ask for a sign about King Talut, but we did not agree that I will be the only one speaking. Lower your voices, Liz. You should not disturb the Holy Prophet in his tent. Sorry, sir. We were talking about Talut and we are afraid that there might have any mistake. Not a mistake as in the mean of a mistake, oh sir. Perhaps a misunderstanding. Frankly, how do we make sure that in this fact, Allah who has chosen Talut as the king for us, we need a miracle to prove that to us. Their prophet said, go to the temple. Tomorrow, the Ark of the Covenant will come to you. How can the Ark of the Covenant come to us after it has been robbed from us? It is in a remote village by river and a long day's journey separates us from it. The Ark will never arrive and thus we shall have the right to reject Talut and choose another king. Did I not tell you that the covenant ark would not come? We are wasting our time, gentlemen. I suggest we send a request to Prophet to ask God to choose a true king for us. Look at the sky. How does the ark fly in the sky? Look, it's coming down from the top. Forgive me, dear Prophet Samuel. We believe you. My master. May we open the ark and see what is inside it? It indicates approval. Come on, hurry up! Look at the traces of the people of Musa and the people of Harun as they are. 
The food is still fresh and edible. These tablets of the Torah have not been touched. Oh my God, I feel a relief I never had. Now that God has honored us by returning the Ark of the Covenant to us, our role in work and preparation for war begins. We must hurry to prepare the army and train the soldiers to fight. Training soldiers will take a long time. I suggest that we use soldiers from abroad who are professional of fighting. And what would make these soldiers fight in the war? Money, for sure. So King Jalut can buy them and turn against us if he pays more. That's right. It's confusing. Oh people, I listened to your opinion and took your advice. And now you have my decision. I will prepare an army of peasants and shepherds. Peasants and shepherds? I do not want an interruption. These worthy people are fighting to recover their stolen lands and herds. And preparations for the army will begin tomorrow morning. Dear King Talut, I want to make a request to you. Stay away, man! Let him speak. I grant you safety. I want to join the army, my lord. What do you know about martial arts? I really don't know anything other than cooking and preparing food. Hmm, you are now a member of the army. Soldiers in the armies need good nutrition. Soldier? You will be tasked with feeding the army. Sir, we've been walking for hours. I know. Command the army to increase their speed. We move faster? We are almost dying of heat and thirst. I suggest we rest a bit. The enemy will not give us a chance to rest. We must get used to hard work. We ran out of water. I know and this is part of my plan. Doesn't any of you have a drink of water with you? Shut up and don't mention water in front of me. How can you stand the thirst and heat of the sun at your age? I know that death is the end of every living being. So how honorable it is for a person to die defending his land. We got lost in this vast desert. I don't want to die. Be kind to us, O Lord of Musa and Harun. وقال لهم نبيهم إن آية ملكه أن يأتيكم التابوت فيه سكينة من ربكم وبقية وبقية مما ترك آل موسى وآل هارون تحمله الملائكة إن في ذلك لآية لكم إن كنتم مؤمنين. Water? Is this a mirage? No, it's water. The river, sir, the river. Stop where you are. Beware, do not drink from this river. The water is fresh and clean and we are almost dying of thirst. Listen to my commands. I am the leader. Do not drink. This river is a trial from God for you. Whoever drinks from it is not with me. And whoever obeys me is with me. I only allow you to scoop up one drink. I said one drink only. Stop drinking. How can we stop having this delicious water? I will not touch the water as long as these are the king's orders. Forgive me, sir. I can't resist. Are you done so we can move on now? The king points towards us. Soldiers, stop. Everyone who drank from the river moved to the left and the rest to the right. You drank from the river. I saw you with my own eyes. Go with those who drank. I am your assistant and your right hand, my lord. My orders are clear. Go with those who drank. Do not be afraid. The punishment cannot be inflicted on such a big number. You are dismissed from the army. Go back to where you came from. Come on, my soldiers. Let's go on. I wish I had resisted the water and had obeyed King Talut. He's foolish. How can he ask soldiers? 
not to drink water in a scorching desert. Don't curse him, man. He may have some wisdom. Why are you taking his side after he kicked you out of his service? I know Master Talut well. Since he was a tanner of leather and a shepherd, a wise and knowledgeable man. Peace be upon King Jalut the Great. Welcome, Amrus. Why did you leave your place in the army of Talut? I came to you with a valuable hunt. I have important news. Speak. The king accompanied us for days in the burning desert without water. And when we stopped in front of a river, he ordered us not to drink. And then he expelled all the soldiers who drank. What a strong leader. How many steadfast men are left? We were in the beginning 8,000 soldiers who drank more than 76,000 from the river. The rest of them remain few. But they are fierce, loyal and able to resist the temptation of thirst. I have other information about King Talut himself. How is that? He worked as a shepherd and tanner and never learned swordmanship or martial arts. An army commander who fights with his mind and does not use his hands well, this is important information. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Where is my reward, sir? I will give you your weight in gold. Where are we going, my lord? Wait! Give me your spear, O oh man, and tell the soldiers to rest a little. Your command, my lord. Soldiers, have a rest. Excuse me, my lord. Why did you stick your spear in the ground? To watch for proximity. So we can locate the camp of the Amalekites and King Jalut. Yes, we will reach them. God willing, at dawn tomorrow. Soldiers, army of giants. This is your chance to eliminate your enemy. WAR! If we defeat them, there will be no trace of them left. Whoever kills the soldier shall get the soldier's land, money, and even double of that. WAR! We are on the outskirts of the land of the Amalekites. Do not alert your enemies or you will be defeated before you start the fight. Victory is ours! We'll camp here tonight and start the offense with the first light of day. Pray to the one God who sent us his prophets, Ibrahim, Yaqub, Musa, and Harun. Prepare a light meal for the soldiers to digest before they start fighting. Lord, my Lord, and their small number. <laughs> the fight will be easier than I expected. Stand firm, soldiers and know that you are fighting in the cause of God and defending your land, your women, your money and your dignity in life. Their number is so large as if they have to attack the disk of the sun. But they will not block its light. We are the owners of the truth and we will be victorious, God willing. How? Do you not see the number in front of you? We have no power today against Jalut and his soldiers. How many of the small groups have been successful against the large groups? Allah willing, God is with the patient. Allah 
My lord, King Jalut, this is our chance to order the attack and smash their noses. I am afraid that Talut will survive the battle. He is simple of their strength. Hmm. Do you see strength in this small number? Yes, Armrose. And what do you see, my lord? I will tell Talut first. Their king Jalut is approaching alone. Maybe he wants to prevent the bloodshed and wants to surrender the land without a fight. I'm not sure he thinks this way. But the traditions of war require that I also come forward and know what he wants. You are Talu, the shepherd of the sheep? Yes, I am the simple man whom God chose as a king to restore the right of his people. You speak well, so do you fight well too? You will not provoke me in this way, forcing me into a decision I have not yet made. Don't you want to fight me and be proud that you are my killer? I am not here to be proud or to be glorious. Why did you come to battle then? So that the land may return to its owners and peace may prevail among people. If you really want peace, I have an offer that might appeal you. Speak. I am listening. Fight me or choose among your men the strongest of the night to fight me. And if I kill him, your lands will be mine and I alone will become the king here. And if you are defeated, Jalut? Ha 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 ha. This is a strange supposition. But if that happens, all that is mine will be yours. Shepherd of the sheep and the land will return to its owners. What do you say? Okay. God does what he wills. So someone should come to fight me. I'm waiting at any time. <laughs> I don't know, my lord. What to say? The fight against Jalut is a dangerous adventure. But it is a worthy adventure. The winner will get a lot. Tell all the soldiers that whoever comes to the duel of Jalut and succeeds in killing him, he will share the kingship with me, marry my daughter and be the king after me. Your order, sir. Heard and obeyed, King Talut. What is the matter with you? Finally, my lord, one of the knights came to confront King Jalut. Fine, bring him right away. But, my lord... What? He is not a knight in the plain sense. I mean... What do you want to say? He is a 16-year-old boy with a slender body and works in shepherding with his brothers. His name is Dawood, sir. It is okay to meet him. I too was a shepherd. I was not born with this crown. I will bring him at once, sir. Please, young man. What a good face that radiates the light of faith. I pity you, my son, from the fight. Thou, peace be upon him, said. There is no escape from God's judgment. You are right, my son. So come on, let me give you my sword and shield. Why don't you extend your hand? What is this you are referring to? The Prophet Daud, peace be upon him, said, It is a sling that I use for hunting and it will be my weapon, God willing. This is the defining moment. Where is this knight? Why did he not come? <laughs> Who are you? The Holy Prophet said, I am Daud. You are a poor, weak human being. I will have mercy on you. So go back and let the other kings and knights come to me. Where is Talut? Daud, peace be upon him, said, I am the one who will kill you, God willing. What a snobbish boy. I told you to go back. Daud, peace be upon him, said, I will not return until I kill you. I will show you now who you are talking to. The prophet Dao took a stone out of his possessions and prayed to his lord. Then he threw it and the stone fell on Jaud's head until it entered his stomach and killed him. <laughs> 
بإذن الله وقتل داود جالوت وآتاه الله الملك والحكمة وعلمه مما يشاء ولولا دفع الله الناس بعضهم ببعض لفسدت الأرض ولكن الله ذو فضل على العالمين Jalut was killed. Jalut was killed. Victory to us. To the battle. To the battle. Praise be to God that He gave us victory, restored our land, and saved us from the oppressive Jalut. Reward! Reward! Hold on. I have to make sure your words are true. We say the truth. We say the truth. We say the truth. I will not give half of my possessions except to the one who brings me the head of Jalut. Lord, the night Dawood has arrived. What are these paws? The head of King Jalut, my lord. Dawood, the noble knight, killed him. You are the one who deserves to succeed me and do justice among people. It is my honor, my son to marry my daughter to you and share my throne with you. Spread the good news all over the country.